Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today I think I'm going to start a series and call it Show Jumping Success. With some tips and tricks to help you, you know, move up in your placings or maybe get started show jumping. Um, today we're going to be looking at what to do when your horse is really reactive and spooky towards a particular fence. This is Flash, my spooky horse for today. He's already working on his spooks because they're moving jumps in the building next door. Um, to put out in the arena. Oh my goodness. So today we have his lion sow pad on which we bring out when he needs to have a little extra courage. So without going into too much detail about the tack you need for show jumping, the basics you need are a close contact show jumping, uh, mono flap cross country, or a general purpose saddle preferably. Um, Appropriate protective boots are optional, but I personally highly recommend them. Uh, breastplate is optional. I don't always ride in a breastplate. I wouldn't even say I typically ride in a breastplate. And, and horse. And for this exercise, and spooky horse. Uh, I just finished building a new jump, which I'll show you in a minute. And I flatted Flash in the arena the other day, and he just was not thrilled about its presence. So that is why he has been chosen. Um, I have his bridle here, just a plain snaffle bridle with a rubber full cheek bit and I'm going to put it on him and then I'll see you out in the arena. Okay, we made it out to the arena. Uh, this is the jumping question. This is the horse not liking the jumping question. So it's quite complicated, it's a lot of fill to it. I'll show you a still shot of it after so you can get a good look at it. Right now I'm just going to hop on and start my warm up and I'm going to try to get my boyfriend to film and see if this shotgun mic can pick me up, pick up my voice while I'm riding so I can explain as I ride rather than do a voiceover because live you always catch more in the moment than you would re-watching on a voiceover because you can feel stuff that you can't necessarily see. So um, there he is in the background, good boyfriend, good job, shut up, shut up. Okay, so I will see you in a moment. I'm going to leave it fully set up. Obviously, I'm going to simplify it because it's like 3-6 right now and spooky. And I'm going to simplify it down to the basic, most basic, and then show you what I would do to build him up. And we're running out of light a little bit, so we'll see how far we get. All right, and before we really get started, I am riding with a bat. I don't always ride with a jumping bat. The bat, in this instance, with a spooky horse and a spooky jump, is never, ever to beat the horse over the jump not even to smack it over the jump. The only purpose of the bat that should be really ever is to reinforce the leg aid. One tap, you should never have to like crank on your horse multiple times. It's just leg. If there's no appropriate response to the leg, then a little bit of boop just to make it more electric and not even like, you just need the sound and you don't need to try to smoke a horse as hard as you can. Okay, so the most important thing to focus on when you're warming up in anticipation of maybe a horse being a little spooky is that your horse is between your aids. So in front of your leg, but not blowing through your hand. And also between your legs side to side. And your hand side to side. So if your horse is going to blow a shoulder and drop out, you're not going to have any control of them and they're going to run up. Um, inevitably. But right now, I'm just working on that to check if he's in front of my leg. If I apply my leg, I don't want him to spring forward on the forehand and get strung up. I just want to see more action. So when I give him a leg, good boy. And then I want to be able to, again, slow him down to make sure he's not blasting out in front of my hand. So remember to always apply a leg when you're slowing down, not just for speed. So we have a couple small jumps set up to warm up with. I put this gray one right here beside the Mario jump so that he is approaching the spooky jump-ish, but he understands that even though there's something scary there, he has to focus on and do his jump. Um, so I'm going to keep warming up. And hopefully you can hear me. So there you see, I always tip his head, and he kind of wants to bulk out a little. So I just close my outside reed, get his pull straight. Then I'm going to come in again. I'm going to ask for this a tiny bit of leg heels left, but not letting him blow that shoulder. There, good. And the reason you want to do a little bit of leg heels is because 
it is a reflex to relax. So you have your foot up the girth and you push your horse over in the rib cage. They can't help but start to relax and feel good. Make sure you have control. Good boy. This is actually a much better reaction than he had yesterday or the day before, whatever day it was, where he wouldn't really get within 10 feet of that. And if he pokes his nose up, I just apply inside leg. Stop. So once they're a little warmed up, uh, sometimes I will trot jumps right out of the warm up. Today, I'm gonna do my full warm up and camp again before I cut or before I jump anything. Um, here. Just gonna push his conch over a little and almost take in a little half tap and then ask for my feet. It's a pretty good indicator if your horse is in front of your leg or not, just to get sticky or they string out or the head goes in the air or the trot. They're not in front of you. And now we're gonna just ride them nice and soft. We're gonna try to get nice jump in the front so that he's not traveling downhill. Uh, altered our spooky jump. Now the planks are on the side. And see how he's trying to bow away there. I'm just going to use my outside hand, outside leg. I don't mind the extreme bend. I just don't want him blowing through my aim. I lift my hands a little in a bit of a half halt there. I'm just going to walk around that once more. We could do that a little better. Mm -hmm. So again, inside leg here, push him almost a hair lateral, but when he starts trying to blow out, then I close my outside. Close, good. That's all right. Oh boy. 
And one more time for good measure. Flash is on the extreme end of spooky horses. He is quite an experienced horse. And lay on slow down. Outside right slow. Good boy. Alright. Um, he's got a very strong fear excitement. He's a blast to ride. Just has a quick. So I'm going from walk to canter. I just want to move the haunches just a little to this side and then depart. See, he's trying to tug me a little and roll on the front end by just flexing my left shoulder blade, massaging soft elbow on the inside, and lots of inside legs. Change in the horse. You're just getting too busy. And left shoulder. Okay. You're getting too busy and agitating your horse rather than getting a result. So nice massage. Close my outside in. And shoulder. Better. more leg on that transition, which is kind of why he fell into the trot. A little behind the vertical, so more. Yeah. And you notice I put more leg on and he slowed down, which is crazy until you actually think about it. We're going to start by this gray jump. It's very small, but it's a, right across or next to the Mario jump. So he might be a little distracted coming down for it. He is quite concerned. I guess more on this side, which is not the side because of these planks. How dare we put those there? So we'll just see what happens. Important to shorten your reins up a little, not for easy grabbing and yanking, but for side to side. So bring them in dead straight. Uh, 
here and it's soft right elbow, close the outside leg. Walk calmly. You want to make this spooky place? To me, it's energetic. I don't want to get him over here and bully him. We're just going to make it relaxing. And then we're going to depart. So we're not accepting that. What you get is what you allow. Uh, that, he strung out there for a second. He recovered okay, but he is way better than that. We're just going to come back here. Lay heel towards Boogie John. Okay, so I am going to go let him have a look at it the way it's set now. If you were testing your horse, uh, you could go ahead and ride right at it. He would probably go over it, but we're not. We're trying to build confidence today, and because he had such a spooky reaction and he hasn't had one to a fence in a long time, we're just going to take it slow and build his confidence. So I'm going to go approach, and I'm just going to have a nice look at it, and we're going to see if he's offering to go forward or not. concerned about the stuff off to the right than he is about the actual obstacle to be jumped itself. Good. And there he demonstrates a willingness to move forward into the jump. Um, when I trot at this, he's going to jump it very crooked with a twisted front end, I bet, and really close to this standard. So what I'm going to do to prepare for that is wait for him to relax. Maybe give him a little goodie. Let's put my bat in my left hand. Just on the instant, he tries to run through my left side eighth. But I have a little something to get his attention. You don't need much trot. This jump is like not even too feet. Come in nice and calm. Straight as can be. Good boy. Do a little circle, and then I'm going to jump it back the other way. And then leg on all the way to the jump, but no extra pressure at the jump. Little leg, even if it were 
afraid they're going to spring off from under you. Don't take your leg off. Don't do it, no matter how tempting. So here we've increased our level of difficulty a bit. We've got his attention, but he's still willing to creep forward and on top of it like this, which is a really good sign. Um, when he's willing to put it in his blind spot, he is not totally terrified of it. So when I ask him for it, it's right there. He's thinking actually of stepping over it right now, but I don't want him to do that and damage my paint job. Uh, so with this one, I mean, we've stood here and had a bit of a look at it, but I'm basically going to circle out and come right at it at a trap and just see what we get. <laughs> so there, I don't know if you can see, but I definitely reached with my right hand and grabbed this fist full of mane. I wasn't sure if he was going to kangaroo and land on his back feet or what, so there's never any shame in grabbing mane. Ooh. To grab mane, rather than grab the mouth, obviously, anytime, no matter what. Or it's not embarrassing, um, just grab it. Grab that mane. We're gonna come from the other vein, from the same side. back on top of the plank just not as high as the cup is currently but on top of the plank and that'll be our last level of difficulty before we run out of line.
Okay, so I'm just going to do left lead play, playing vertical over there, and then left lead approach. Mario again, I find mixing in the simple jumps that he's familiar with, with the challenging jump, it'll help him build confidence, build confidence, and then test confidence a little bit. So this one I'm not going to let him see because we're just adding back the rail we already jumped, so it is a little bit of a test. I know. He's raring to go, so I guess we'll wait for him to stand quietly. And then we'll be on our way. Thank you. We don't care about rails really at this point. We're just going to do it once more on this rail. We don't mind that, especially on this horse. If there was a horse I'd like to get strong and kind of pull off, huh? I would be a lot more concerned about fixing it. But uh, we're going to end the jumping there. Oh, no root. Oh. And uh, 
I'm just going to cool them out now, but we're not going to film it. And he said, go, go more! Okay, so we're back in the barn. We survived. Oh, it's so spooky though. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm actually remembering to film an outro, so everyone should be very proud um, because that's something I always forget to do. <laughs> so I really hope you enjoyed this installment. Um, this is not like a where to start your horse show jumping day one. These are just going to be like little show jumping success kind of things, and I'm going to make them as they come up because to go like stepwise from beginner to advance would just require more organization than I have in my life right now. And um, I thank you for tuning in and watching him, the greatest horse in the whole universe. And uh, we thank Lion Pad for making this experience possible with nobody falling off or dying. So I'll see you guys in the next vlog. Thanks for tuning in. Day two. And this is him schooling on his next jumping day, which was a few days later. And as you can see, he's handling it now at a bigger height and full complexity with no issue.